has done in your personal life, in the church of the living God, in our nation, and what God is doing, and what God will do. Open your mouth and bless the name of the Lord. He said, make a joyful noise. Come into the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving. Does it occur to you that today is the first Sunday in the new month, a new quarter? And you are in the presence of the Almighty God. Open your mouth and worship His holy name. Thank Him for His faithfulness, for His loving kindness, for His promises that never fails, for His word that is yea and amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Why not just worship the Lord this morning? Bless his holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We are going to bless the name of the Lord. For what the Lord did at the just concluded Easter retreat, I call it three in one. The retreat, the GCK and Impact Academy. The Word of God says in the book of Matthew chapter 4 verse 23 that the sick were brought to Christ and he healed them all. You and I were living witnesses of what the Lord did at Taraba State. The lame were walking, the dumb and deaf, those who could not speak from childhood began to speak how many crushes were raised up, and how many souls were saved unto the Lord. I want you to remember the word the Lord has done and just appreciate God. Taraba was wonderful. The miracles were amazing. The presence of God was mighty to save. Sinners were converted. The high and mighty society, they had the word of God, and they were convicted. There were great testimonies of what the Lord can do the promise of God became real in our very presence. The word of God said, He that believeth in me, the works I do, he shall do. Greater works. I say greater works. God did mighty things right in our presence at the just concluded Easter retreat. Both at the Alpha location, at different locations across the nation, across the continent, across the globe. Open your mouth and worship the Lord this morning. Bless his holy name. Give him glory that is due to him. Only God can do these things. Only the name of the Lord can do these things. Let's worship the Lord this morning. I really cannot hear you appreciate God. What money cannot buy? What medical science cannot deal with? The word of God, the power in the name of Jesus, he did it in our very eyes. Bless the name of the Lord. Worship him. Thank him for what he has done. Greater things. Wonderful things. Beyond our own imagination, the Lord did it. I said the Lord did it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We are gathered this morning, and the word of God tells us in the book of John chapter 4, verse 24, it says, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We are gathered this morning. I want us to commit each and every worshiper into the hands of the living God. That the spirit of God will be mightily present here today. And we will worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. We will not just come as they come. It will just be a routine. But that the spirit of God will move in your personal life and in the entire congregation, open your mouth and pray. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That we will not resist the word of God. We will not deny the truth of the word of God. We will say, Lord, speak for thy servant here. That we will feel the presence of God, the power of God, at every corner of the congregation. From the children's section, to the youth section, and to the larger congregation, the adult section, 
that we will worship God in the beauty of his holiness. Open your mouth and just pray this morning. That our worship service this morning will be filled with the power of the Almighty. We'll be filled with the presence of the Almighty God. That the mighty power of God will be here to save, to deliver, to heal. To make whole, to set free. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. The Lord that did it in the time past. He says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever is here. And he will do it. Our worship service this morning will be with a difference. And that is why you have come early. To pour out your heart before God and say, Lord, we are your presence. Fill us beyond our expectation. Fill our cup to overflowing this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. A bigger and a better. Amen. We are going to pray for every vessel that the Lord will use to officiate, to minister. That God will pour upon them his mighty grace, unction, anointing, and that every minister that we minister this morning will minister life unto the congregation. I said they will minister life unto the congregation. The Bible said the letter killeth, but it is the word of God that giveth life. Open your mouth and pray. That this morning, every vessel that we minister, we minister with grace, with the Spirit of God, with great unction from above, with anointing like never before. Beyond their preparation, beyond their study, that the Holy Spirit will empower the world and it will touch lives. It will turn around lives. It will transform souls and it will touch the heart of men. Open your mouth and declare, and the Lord will do it, that every vessel will receive the touch of the living God. They will minister like the oracles of God. The hand of God will be mighty upon his servants. Open your mouth and pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Psalm 110, and in verse 3. Let's see the word of God, what it tells us. The word of God says very clearly that in the days of his power, in the day of his power, it says, thy people shall be willing. We are going to pray for the willing heart. That the heart of the people will be willing. I say the heart of the people will be willing. Let's open our mouths and pray. That every worshiper that comes this morning will come with a willing heart. Not a selective heart. Not the one that chooses this one and rejects this one because it's not convenient. For the heart of the people will be willing that sinners will be converted, backsliders will have a turnaround, and believers will be edified. That today's worship service will leave nobody the same way, and you in particular will not leave you the same way. That the heart of the people will be willing. Newcomers, old timers, visitors, GCK convert, that the heart of the people of God will be willing. Say, speak, Lord, for thy servant here is. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let's commit our other brothers and sisters to the Lord. They are still on the way. Whatever obstacle is on the way, on their way that the Lord will remove them. As God has granted us the grace to be here this morning, because God is going to do mighty things. I say God is going to do mighty things that the Lord will bring them to. The traffic will be free. Obstacles on their way will be released and they will come timely. Open your mouth and pray. That God will grant our brethren, brothers and sisters who are yet on the way God's speed. That they will arrive timely so that they can receive the very best from the Lord. As the Lord this morning. That he will touch our people Perhaps there is somebody there who is still hurting between two opinions. Do I go? Do I not go? Perhaps there is somebody there who is still saying, well, maybe there will be no transport, no money. Pray this morning that the Holy Spirit will quicken them. They will be here because God is going to do a great thing. They will not miss out on the blessings of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. I read from the word of God. In Psalm 119, verse 130, it says, 
The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. Let's ask the Lord this morning that the entrance of the word of God will bring life and light into our hearts. Yes, we have been coming. Yes, we have been studying. But today God will give us a new revelation. I say God will give us a new light from his word. God will give us a new understanding today that will move us forward in our journey to Calvary in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and pray. Ask the Lord this morning, as we journey to heaven, that the Lord will give us better illumination, clearer insight. Every doubt will be removed. Every confusion will be taken away. We will say we have never had it like this before. We will say, now I understand. Once I was blind, blind now I can see. Let that be our testimony today at this worship service. Are you praying, brother? Are you praying, sister? That the Lord will give us deeper revelation, greater revelation, that will help us in our Christian journey, that the hearts that are already, the feet that are lame and weak, will get strong because understanding has come. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. A better and a brighter, amen. As we begin to conclude this prayer for now, I want to read from the book of Psalm 23 and in verse number 5. And I want you to personally pray for yourself that the Lord will fill your cup to overflowing. I thought the amen would be louder. Please pray for yourself that the Lord will fill your cup this morning. Your vessels not are filled. Father, we thank you. We do appreciate you greatly this morning because we know that you have called us here this morning for this Sunday worship service. We will go back rejoicing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We remain standing as we take our congregational song. We are reading the gospel hymns and songs, number 27. I am bound for Canaan. Consecrated Lord to thee, take my moments and my days. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always, only for my king. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee. Take my silver and my gold. Not a might will I with old. Take my intellect and use. Every power as thou shalt choose. Take my will and make it thine. It shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own. It shall be thy royal throne. Take my love, my Lord, I pour. And I feel a treasure store. Take myself, and I will be ever only all for thee.
good morning, church. Let's bow our heads to pray. Our eternal King of glory, we are grateful to you for this life you have given us. Thank you for the privilege of coming to your presence at this moment. Thank you for the day of worship service. Be thou exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for what Christ has done for us on the cross of Calvary. We praise your name for this in Jesus' name. As we study your word this morning, we pray that Holy Spirit will give us the best in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' name we pray. Last Sunday, by the special grace of God, we are all at the retreat, GCK and the other program. We are greatly blessed of the Lord as we learn about the sufficiency of Jesus, of our God. And the Lord greatly taught us through the man of God. We are greatly blessed. We pray that the blessing of God be permanent in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. This morning we are studying from Asad Scripture, Lesson 105. The topic is the charge and portion of the priests and Levites. The charge and portion of the priests and Levites. A memory verse is taken from the book of Numbers, chapter 18, verse 5. Can we have a volunteer to please quickly read for us? Do we have a volunteer? And thou shalt keep the charge of the sanctuary and the charge of the altar, that there be no wrath anymore upon the children of Israel. Numbers chapter 18, verse 5. Thank you so much. Our text is from Numbers chapter 18, verses 1 to 32. But because of our time, we are reading verses 1 to 10. Can we have a fast reader? Any volunteer? Please quickly move to the mic. We are reading verse 1 to 10, 15 to 17, 24, 29. Numbers chapter 18 from verse 1 to 10. And the Lord said unto Aaron, Thou and thy sons and thy father's house, with thee shall bear the iniquity of the sanctuary, and thou and thy sons with thee shall bear the iniquity of your priesthood. And thy brethren also of the tribe of, the, of Levi, the tribe of thy father, bring thou with thee, that they may be joined unto thee, and minister unto thee, but thou and thy sons with thee shall minister before the tabernacle of witness. And they shall keep their charge, and the charge of all the tabernacle. Only they shall not come nigh the vessels of the sanctuary, and the altar, that neither they nor ye also die. Verse 4. And they shall be joined unto thee, and keep the charge of the tabernacle of the congregation for all the service of the tabernacle. And a stranger shall not come nigh unto you, and ye shall keep the charge of the sanctuary, and the charge of the altar, that there be no wrath any more upon the children of Israel. And I, behold, I have taken your brethren the Levites from among the children of Israel. To you they are given as a gift for the Lord to do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. Therefore thou and thy sons with thee shall keep your priest's office for everything of the altar and within the veil. And ye shall serve. I have given your priest's office unto you as a service of gift. And the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. Verse 8. And the Lord spake unto Aaron, Behold, I also have given thee the charge of my Eve offerings of all the hallowed things of the children of Israel. Unto thee have I given them by a reason of the anointing, and to thy son by an ordinance forever. These shall be thine of the most holy things, reserved for fire, every oblation of theirs, every meat offering of theirs, and every offering of theirs, and every trespass offering of theirs, which they shall render unto thee, shall be most holy for thee and for thy sons. In the most holy place shall thou eat it, every male shall eat it, it shall be holy unto thee. Verse 15 to 17. Verse 14 15. to 17. Everything devoted in Israel shall be thine. Everything that openeth the matrix in all flesh which they bring unto the Lord, whether it be of the men or, or beast, shall be thine. Nevertheless, the firstborn of man shall thou surely redeem, and the first thing of unclean beasts shall thou redeem. And those that are to be redeemed from a month old shall thou redeem, according to thy estimation, for the money of five shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, which is twenty geras. But the firstling of a cow, or the firstling of a sheep, or the firstling of a goat, thou shalt not redeem. They are holy. Thou shalt sprinkle their blood upon the altar, and shalt burn their fat for an offering made by fire for a sweet savour unto the Lord. 
verse 24 to 29 quickly. Chapter 24. Verse 24 to 29. Verse 24 to 29. But the tithe of the children of Israel, which they offer as an Eve offering unto the Lord, I have given to the Levites to inherit. Therefore I have said unto them, Among the children of Israel, they shall have no inheritance. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Thus speak thou the Levite unto the Levites, and say unto them, When ye take of the children of Israel, the tithe which I have given you from them for your inheritance, then ye shall offer up an Eve offering of it for the Lord, even a tenth part of the tithe. And this your Eve offering shall be reckoned unto you as though it were the corn of the treasured floor, and as the fullness of the wine press. Thus ye also shall offer an off Eve offering unto the Lord of all your tithe which ye receive of the children of Israel. And ye shall give thereof the Lord's Eve offering to Aaron the priest. Out of all your gifts ye shall offer every Eve offerings of the Lord of all the best thereof, even the allot part thereof out of it. Verse 30. Therefore thou shalt say unto them, When ye have healed the best thereof from it, then it shall be counted unto the Levites as the increase of the threshing floor, and as the increase of the wine press. And ye shall eat Thank it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. After the Lord put to rest the rebellion and murmuring of Korah, Datan, and Abiram, he gave Aaron his sons and the Levites charge regarding the service of the tabernacle of his holy presence. He specified the duties and responsibilities of the priesthood as well as penalties attached to those who venture into the ministry without divine appointment and anointing. The charge God gave to Aaron, his son, and the Levites was to enable them minister according to their callings, to their callings and avoid a clash of responsibilities, which is capable of provoking conflicts within the priesthood. The Levites were raised as support staff to the Aaronic priesthood and were permitted to minister as workers with him and his sons, who were the high priests and priests respectively. God gave, God also made clear what should be their remuneration and prerequisite or reward, which must attend their service. He assigned generous reward to specific responsibilities. The Levites had special, specific portions or inheritance for the service they render in the tabernacle of the congregation. This story shows that God generously rewards those who serve him diligently as he commanded the children of Israel to minister to their leaders out of their best substance. So also, he ensures that those who give of their best to him receive the best from him. As we see Proverbs chapter 3, 9 to 10, he is concerned for the welfare of his people when we serve him. He takes care of us and will not let the, anyone go empty-handed. The, that takes us to the first point. We are having three points this morning to consider. One, charge to Aaron and the Levites. From where we have read, we have seen from Numbers chapter 1, verses 1 to 7, and also chapter 3, verses 6 to 12, that the Lord commanded the house of Levites to serve along with Aaron the priest and the children of Aaron. And the Lord gave a warning and also specific instruction as to what to do. Aaron and his sons constituted the priesthood and had an oversight function of the services of the sanctuary. They were to bear iniquity and burden of the priesthood and of the people. And the Levites were to assist them to take care of everything about the tabernacle. To bear iniquity means they will be held responsible for performing the necessary rites to atone for sins of the people. The Levites were chosen from among the congregation of Israel and given to Aaron as a gift to work together. They were to keep Aaron's charge or command and the commands of God's stand, standard concerning the works of the sanctuary. Question. Who are, the, who are the equivalents of priests and Levites in this present age as in the Old Testament? Can we have anybody from the front here? Yes, sister. Brother, you can please quickly answer. 
who are the equivalent priests and Levites we have today? They are the uh, pastors and the workers in the church. Thank you. We, today, the believers, the leaders, the workers, and the, are the people that are into the priesthood of God today. And we are to do it effectively. This is to prevent any further tragedy as the case of Korah and his company that we have seen earlier or, and, or else they incur the wrath of God. Through the duties of the priests and the Levites, they were held responsible for any offense or desecration and of the tabernacle of the Lord. They had to take care of, of service to do what the Lord required as we have in Leviticus chapter 10 verse 7. No other tribe was chosen by God for this service and no stranger was allowed to come near the holy things of the sanctuary to avoid the wrath of God. Therefore, thou and thy sons with thee shall keep the priest of office for everything of the altar and within the veil, and ye shall serve, shall serve, and the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. This is what we are learning, and the Lord is giving us an instruction as to what to do so that we can uh, do the will of God. Question, why were strangers not allowed into the sanctuary of, in the Old Testament, and how can we apply this in the New Testament? Can we have somebody from the front here? Yes, quickly. Those who are not divinely appointed and anointed or have divine approval are regarded as stranger. But in the New Testament, those who don't have the right relationship with the Lord, who are not born again, they are not permitted into the service of God. But to us to have a right relationship with the Christ, we must have Christ as our Lord and Savior. Thank you so much. We have seen the people who are not appointed to do certain things that did that, and they were penalized for it. So only believers, those who are born again, can render any service to God that is acceptable. And I pray that the Lord will help each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Question, what can believers learn from God's choice of leaders and workers? What can we learn from the choice of leaders and workers by God? Yes. Can we have anybody? Yes. We can learn that God choosing uh, people is not by human uh, standard, but is by his mercy and sovereign co consideration. Thank you. Thank you so much. God chooses whom he will and place them in the service of God. And as we are chosen, we should be the best in the hand of God. That takes us to the second point. Care for ministers in the sanctuary. Numbers chapter 18, verses 20. 8 to 24, and Exodus 23, 25. We see that God made provision for the ministers who served the law because he didn't want them to suffer in vain or to be helpless. As a great and caring father, God made provision for his servant. And the Lord spake unto Aaron, Behold, I also have given thee the charge of mine, heave offering of all allowed things, and the children of Israel unto the Unto thee have I given them by reason of anointing unto thy sons and by ordinance forever. He specifically gave them portions of the most holy things reserved for the, for the fire. Every oblation of their, every meat offering of theirs and every sin offering of theirs and every trespass offering there of theirs which they shall render. God has given a portion to them because they are the people that God has chosen. So God made provision for every devoted uh, children of God, servant of God, workers in the household of God, and he expects them to take from part of what he has provided when people give the offering, any form of offering that I was given unto God or brought into the house of God, he give them so that they can take part of it and make provision. He make provision for everyone. So we see today, God takes care of everyone who serve him and reward them adequately without bias. In reference to adequate provision made for the priest and the Levite, the scripture says, even so, are the Lord ordained that they which pre preach the gospel should live 
of the gospel. For the workman is worthy of his meat. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 14, and in Matthew chapter 10, verse 10, it is the duty of Christian churches and believers to maintain their workers and ministers. However, the best reward reside in heaven for believers who serve God willingly and faithfully. We serve God here on earth with our best, with our time, with our money, and everything God has given to us. And indeed, God reward his people. He makes provision through which all the workers and leaders in the church and gospel can serve and be blessed. And that is what the Lord has done even for us today. As we eat this, the Almighty God will bless us in Jesus' name. That is also the third point, contribution for Levites from their portion. In Numbers chapter 8, verses 25 to 32, and also in 31, verse 25, verse 50, in Malachi chapter 3, verse 8 to 12, and in Philippians chapter 4, verse 15 to 18, the children of Levi were saddled with the responsibility of ministering with the with and for the priests in the tabernacle. Levites were to concentrate on their service without distraction by any other labor or service. God specifically told them, Thou shalt have no inheritance in their land, neither shalt thou have any part among them. I am thy God, I am thy part and inheritance among the children of Israel. God wanted their attention and full service to be given to him. However, he made provision for their subsist substance and welfare while working for him. He gave the Levites all the truth in his tent of Israel, in Israel for an inheritance for, the, for their service for which they serve in the tabernacle of the congregation. They were to be sustained through this means without having to beg for their upkeep. So we see that today also God makes provision for us and out of what has provided for us as people of God, we also must give our tithe and offering of those things that God has sufficiently made provision for us. Question, give reasons for demanding payment of tithe from the Levites and how is this really related to the believers today? Can we have anybody to assist us? Yes, quickly. Yes, the hand there. Thank you. We give uh, our tithes, number one, because God commanded it, but it's for the maintenance of the church and for the work of the church. Thank you so much. We, we as members of the church, we as workers, we are the leaders, all of us and each of us, we are to give tithes of our offering and of our tithes as well. Our tithe and offering, uh, one-tenth of this must be given to the Lord as we come to the service of God. And then each time we have the privilege of coming before him, we are to give our best. Though the levers were adequately provided for through the best that were offered to God in tithes or offering, they were also expected to contribute the tenth part of the best they received to God. Thus speak unto the Levites and say unto them, When ye take of the children of Israel the tithes which I have given you from them for your inheritance, then ye shall offer up an Eve offering of it for the Lord even a tenth part of tithe, as we see in Numbers chapter 18, 26. This means they were to give the tithe of the tithe. They are to give part of the tithe, the tenth of it, they are to receive, which they receive from the priest. Ye shall also offer an if offering unto the Lord of your tithe, which ye receive of the children of Israel. And ye shall give thereof the Lord's if offering to Aaron the priest. Out of all your gifts, ye shall offer every Eve offering of the Lord, of all the best thereof, even the hallowed part of thereof out of it. God commanded each and every one of the Levites, the, the, tithe, the, the priests, they are to give, even though they serve the Lord, they are not exempted from giving. And so today we are learning as leaders, as workers and members of the church, when we have the opportunity and as the time we come to the Lord, we are to give the best of our best unto God. Question. 
Why should believers pay tithe and offering? Yes, can we have somebody to quickly answer that for us? Believers are to pay their tithes and offering for maintenance of the church and at the same time to take care of the workers in the church. Thank you so much. Bring ye all the tithe and offering to the house of the Lord so that there will be meat in the house of the Lord. Out of our tithe and offering, all the services in the church have been provided for us. And all the beautiful things that God is doing in our time, in our church, is as a result of what we give to the Lord. So each and every one of us, I encourage this morning to give the best to our God. And as we do that, the Almighty God will also be with us in Jesus' name. We have seen the charge this morning, what is expected of us as people of God, as members of the church, as workers in the church, each and every one of us, we have been charged to serve our God, to give our God, and to give the portion of what the Lord has given to us as we give back unto him. We want to rise up now as we want to pray, asking the Lord that God will give us the grace. Can we please rise up? Let's ask the Lord to bless us, to assist us, and to give us listening ear, that as we give unto Lord, as we receive of the Lord, we also will give unto our God in the right proportion. We give the best of our time, the best of our love, the best of our service, the best of everything that he has given unto us so that we can continue in the grace of God. We have all received the grace of God in our life. He has saved us. He has sanctified us. He has blessed us in every area. And so we are to live all our life unto him as our service unto the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Our Father and our God, we are grateful unto you for this opportunity. We pray that grace of God will be upon our life, that as we come to the service of God, as we have this opportunity to live for you, to serve you, we will give our time, give our life, give everything you are giving unto us, and to the glory of your name in Jesus' name. Thank you for hearing us. Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. We've just uh, <clears throat> listened to the Sajid scripture. If we have any question on the text, please can we rise up wherever we are and come right before me on the podium. If you have a question? Yes, our brother in the front. Good morning, sir. I want to take my question, number chapter 1, chapter 18, verse 1 and verse 5. And the Lord said unto Aaron, Thou and thy sons and thy father's house with thee, shall bear the iniquity of the sanctuary, and thou and thy sons with thee shall bear the iniquity of your priesthood. My question there is iniquity. Bearing the iniquity of the sanctuary. Thank you and the iniquity of the priesthood, verse 5, verse 5. And we shall keep the charge of the sanctuary and the charge of the altar, that there be no rot anymore upon the children of Israel. Does it mean that if leadership, leaders, are not keeping the charge of the altars that the children of Israel will be suffering for it? That's my question. Thank you. Our sister. Good morning, sir. 
So, um, my question is from Numbers chapter 18, verse 15. Everything that openeth the matrix in all flesh, which they bring unto the Lord, whether it be of men or beasts, shall be thine. Nevertheless, the firstborn of man shall thou surely redeem, and the firstling of unclean beasts shall thou redeem. I, I want you to understand um, the part where the firstborn of man um, are being redeemed. Why is it only the first, um, firstborn of men that are being redeemed? And um, in what context? I want to understand uh, that um, redemption, that word redeem. In what context does it, um, does it imply here? Thank you. The last brother at the back. Yes. Good morning, sir. My question is that uh, is concerned. No, no. The brother at the back. Good morning, sir. My the question brother, is... no. The brother with that, yes, the brother that is in glasses. Good morning, sir. My question is taken from our text, uh, from our booklets. I read uh, an underlining statement that it says, um, it is the duty of Christian churches and believers to maintain their workers and ministers. However, the best reward is reserved in heaven for believers who serve God willingly and faithfully. Now, the question is this. Um, I engage with all of my brother why our location group of church, um, Ogba Iju, they don't normally allocate um, church bus. So I asked him, what should be the challenge? He says, most of the drivers there, they are not being taken care of. And I say, how do you mean? He said, oftentimes, after driving the bus, coming back, it is 2,000 error they gave to them. So I want to know, can the church do better in taking care of our drivers so that they can have drivers to come and take most of our brethren? Most of them are stranded. They are not here in this morning. Thank That's you. My challenge, sir. Thank you very much. Let's come to the first uh, question in Numbers chapter 18 in verse 1. And the Lord said unto Aaron, Thou and thy sons and thy father's house, with thee shall bear the iniquity of the sanctuary, and thou and thy sons with thee shall bear the iniquity of your priests. You will notice here that for the first time, God has to speak directly unto Aaron. The second time God spoke to Aaron was in Leviticus chapter 10 in verse 8. And why? Because he knew his two children had died and that he needed to pass that information across to him that since he's in charge of the tabernacle, he needs to guide the responsibility. Otherwise, there will be casualty. And I think that God is faithful to warn everybody. And that's why if you are here, and God has been warning you about a particular thing, and you refuse to hear, and you refuse to answer, the consequences are going to be very, very severe. Now, we go to our sister, who asked the question in verse 15? Everything that opened the matrix in all flesh, which they bring unto the Lord, whether it be of men or beasts, shall be thine. Nevertheless, the firstborn of a man shall thou surely redeem. What does that mean? You know, as we read the passage, we saw that the children of Israel will have to pay tithes. They have to do one thing or the other as far as the service of the Lord is concerned and those priests that are offering their services to the Lord. But then, when it gets to a man, you cannot offer man for sacrifice. 
It's not possible. And how do you redeem? They are going to pay money for that so that they are redeeming the man because you cannot take a man to the altar and offer him as a sacrifice. Now, our brother is asking about, you know, our brethren that are driving the buses. You have seen here that these people who are appointed by God are to render service unto the Lord. And as they are rendering service unto the Lord, the Lord is counting it. And we need to understand that God has given us that responsibility that we must render service to the Lord. And our brethren who are driving the buses, they are members of the church. Yes, we agree sometimes they might have one need or the other. And there are our brethren that are in charge of the service. But let me tell you, you know, when we are talking about tithe and offering in the church, who pays it? You. I. We. The question is, how much do we pay? And you know, I try to figure it out and ask myself, I'm a pastor, I have districts under me, and the church is to buy landed property for them. A church is going to fence the property for them. The question is, in my own district, how much do we pay per month, averagely? We have full-time workers in the church. And you know, GCK now, we are gone global. And we are spending a huge sum of our money every month. Yes. We are not to fight for the brethren. They are members of the church, just as I, you, we are members of the church. And they do it occasionally. It is not every day. I'm not saying that they cannot get stupid, but at the same time, we are members of the church. And if we are members of the church, what does the Bible tell us? The Bible has told us something. In Acts chapter 4, in Acts chapter 4, in verse 31, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken, where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they speak the word of God with boldness, and the multitude of them that believed were of one heart, and of one soul, when neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own. But they had all things what? They had all things what? Now, in verse 33, and with great power gave apostles witnesses of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lied, for as many as were possessors. Of what? Of what? Of what? Houses sold them and brought the prizes of the things that were sold and laid them down. Where? Where? At the apostle seed and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Joseph, who by the apostle was named Barnabas, which is been interpreted the son of consolation, a Levi, and of the country of Cyprus, having lands, did what? Did what? And brought the money 
and lay it where? That's the early church. And we are children and offspring of the early church. I've told you, our brethren, they don't come every day. It's only when we have combined service and sometimes. But the point I'm trying to make is that your district, that brother that is driving the bus, if the church cannot fully cater, why don't the members decide and say, well, our brother, we know the church cannot do everything. What is the, what is the take? And then you decided to volunteer and say, I will give these. Just a stipend. Brethren, the church is carrying a lot of load. And if the church is carrying a lot of load, I feel that yourself, myself, all of us will be able to contribute. You, you can see here, we are reading about the early church. And we are the offspring of the early church. And the early church, they did so much. And that's why the gospel has been brought to you and I. My prayer is that the Lord will provide for you. I said the Lord will provide for you. If the Lord provides for you and you have enough, how much is 2,000? How much is 3,000? that we are going to bother ourselves about. We will pray, and the Lord will bless you today in Jesus' name. Let's rise up so that we can talk to the Lord. Why not talk to the Lord? Pray. You have heard the message as soon as the sad scripture is concerned. Why not talk to the Lord? Are you a stranger in the house of the Lord? Are you a stranger? You are not converted. You are not born again. You are not giving your life to the Lord. And that's why if you get near the sanctuary, dead, we come. But we are no longer in the Old Testament. We are now in the New Testament. And that's why the Lord is calling on you. Are you a stranger here today? You have not given your life to the Lord. This is an opportunity for you to give your life, to surrender your life, into the hands of the Lord. Why not talk to the Lord? Lord, I am here. I've not given up my life. We have seen Aaron and his children, the priests of the Lord. They were giving guidelines. They were giving directives as to what and how to officiate in the house of the Lord. Are you a leader here? Are you officiating in the house of the Lord? Are you obeying the dictates on the basis of which you were appointed to serve in the sanctuary of the Lord? Are you taking it for granted? Are you taking it for granted? Why not talk to the Lord? I've been taking your work for granted. But today, you have opened my eyes to see my responsibilities. Am I discharging them? Am I carrying them out? Why not call upon the Lord? Pray. Pray. You have been told to pay your tithe and offering. How much do you pay? And yet, 
The church has a lot of responsibilities. A lot to cater for. The church has to buy land. The church has to fence your land. The church has to fill your swampy side. Yet, if you calculate how much you pay every month, maybe to buy a land for you as a district, it will take you to save and contribute for almost 10, 15 years. Why not talk to the Lord? I say, Lord, you have opened my eyes to see. I cannot put everything on the church. You know, church has full-time workers to care for. We have rent to pay. From the same pause, why not pray? Why not talk to the Lord? Lord, open my course. Open opportunities for me. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. And I can assure you, if you do the will of God, the Lord will make a way for you. The Lord will provide for you. You can see in the early church, they sold their lands. They sold their houses. And they brought everything. What's your contribution? What are you giving to the Lord? For the life you are living. Every day you wake up, you are strong, you are healthy. And you go after your work. And you go and rest and you wake up the following morning. Everything is all right. Are you thanking the Lord? Are you appreciating the Lord? In what way are you going to appreciate the Lord? Why not pray? Why not talk to the Lord? Lord, you need to help me. You need to help me to also help the church. In Jesus' name, we pray. You are going to tell the Lord, Lord, in this service, I want you to do one thing that I want to give abundantly to your work. If you do it sincerely, all this we are talking about, this one is not enough, that one is not enough. I can assure you, everybody will be happy. Amen? That's why you need to call upon the Lord. Lord, come and do wonders in my life today. Provide in abundance. He will do it for you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Father, we thank you very much. We have seen in the Old Testament how you appointed priests and leaders to work in your vineyard. And you gave guides and you gave directives. And they followed. Where they did not follow, there were consequences. We are just calling upon you, and we are praying that, Lord, where we are not doing the work you have given unto us as we are supposed to do it, we pray you will forgive us in Jesus' name. And you did not want us to just remain there. You want us to move ahead. Lord, we are looking up to you, the work you have committed into our hands. We pray. We need your special anointing. We need your special power. Give unto us in Jesus' name. We are spoken about giving to God. And you have challenged us. In Luke chapter 6 and verse 38, give. 
and it shall be given unto you. Father, we are calling upon you, we are asking that whatever is restraining us, whatever is hindering us, whatever is slowing us down, that we will not give according to the measure you have given unto us. We pray that sin, take it away from us in Jesus' name. When we give, we will not regret. When we give, we will have abundance. And Father, this morning, I pray on behalf of every soul, every brother, every sister, every worker, every pastor that is here. Lord, we pray you give in abundance to them from this moment in Jesus' name. Well, we have more than enough. You will have more than enough. And the church of God, the militant church of God, will move forward in Jesus' name. We are waiting for your testimony. We are waiting for your miracle. We are waiting for your superabundance upon the church. And the church will not lack again in Jesus' name. But thank you because we believe you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray.
right top that we sing about gospel hymns and songs. Number 92. Gospel hymns and songs. Number 92. I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. All to Jesus I surrender. Humbly at his feet I bow. Worldly pleasures all forsaken. Take me, Jesus, take me now. All to Jesus I surrender. Lord, I give myself to thee. Fill me with thy love and power. Let thy blessing fall on me. All to Jesus I surrender. Now I feel the sacred flame. Oh, the joy of whose salvation, glory, glory to his name. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all.
give of your best to the master. Give of your best to the master. Give of the strength of your youth. Throw your soul's fresh glowing ardor into the battle for truth. Jesus has set the example. Doubtless was he, young and brave. Give him your loyal devotion. Give him the best that you have. Give of your best to the master. Give him, the, give him first place in your heart. Give him first place in your service. Consecrate every part. Give and to you shall be given. God, his beloved son, gave. Gratefully seeking to serve him, give him the best that you have. Give of your best to the master. Not else is worthy is love. He gave himself for your ransom. Gave up his glory above. Laid down his life without murmur. You from sin's ruin to save. Give him your heart's adoration. Give him the best that you have. Give of, the, give of your best to the master. Give of the strength of your youth. Clad in salvation's full armor, join in the battle for truth.
As we go to the Lord in prayers, give of your best to the Master. The message has come to us in very clear words. It's now up to you and I to say, Lord, I've had your word and I will obey. Why not open your mouth and commit yourself to the Lord in prayer? That, Lord, help me. Not just to be the hearers of the word, but to be the doer of your word. To do my part and to do it well. To support the good work that the church is doing. That the Lord, in turn, will remember my good works. Are we praying, brethren? The message has come to you, it has come to me. Ask the Lord this morning that he will help you personally to see where there are gaps and needs and that God will use you and use me to fill those gaps. Our God has been faithful in all his ways. He has been faithful to all his promises in your life. If the disciples of old, in the days of the apostles, could do it, we also will do our part, the very best. As a priest, as a Levite, as a born-again Christian, as a son in the kingdom, open your mouth and say, Lord, help me to play my part and play it well. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. It's time for us to give our tithes and our offerings. Whatsoever you have brought to honor the Lord with this morning, to worship the Lord with, please put your hands in your pockets, your purses, your bags, and bring them out and raise them up as we read from the Word of God. I read from the book of Malachi chapter 3, and I read verse 10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now here, we say the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Verse 11, And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and it shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your wine cast their fruit before the time in the field, said the Lord of hosts. And all the nations shall call you blessed. For ye shall be a delightsome land, said the Lord of hosts. Let's lift them up as we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. You gave your son, Jesus Christ, freely for our redemption. And from the abundance you have blessed us with, we have brought this little token. We are asking first that you accept us and then accept our tithes and our offerings in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's drop the tithes and the offerings to the offering bags that have been passed around as we remain in the mood of prayer. We are going to pray for the nation. And I read from the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 7, and from verse number 14 through to 16. Second Chronicles, chapter 7, from verse number 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. We are going to pray for our nation, Nigeria, and the nations of Africa, and across the world 
that righteousness will be restored to every land. I thought the amen would be bigger. The Bible says it's only righteousness that exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Let's open our mouths and lift up our nation before God. That the Almighty God will lead us to a point of genuine repentance from every iniquity and unrighteousness so that God will visit our land and turn things around. There is nothing that God cannot do. There is no nation that God cannot turn around. Let's ask the Lord that righteousness, purity, holiness, from the top to across every part of the nation, that the word of God will gain ground and will bear fruits. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. We are going to pray for our Father in the Lord. And I will read from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 34. And in verse 7, I believe you are going to pray. I say I believe you are going to pray for our Father in the Lord. In verse 7, And Moses was 120 years old. When he died, his eyes was not dim, nor his natural force abated. As our Father in the Lord goes from every location to location, fulfilling the mission, let's pray that his eyes will not dim. His strength will not abate. And God will honor his word in his mouth in Jesus' name. Brethren, open your mouth and pray. The train has moved. Another location will be receiving visitation very soon. As our Father and the Lord travels from corner to corner in the course of the work, in the course of the gospel, the presence and power of God will be with him. And great and mighty things and miracles will accompany his ministry. He will fulfill his calling. He will fulfill his mission fully accomplished. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's pray for the church. That all the gates of hell gathered together will not prevail against the church of God. All the gates of false worship, false prophecies, all the gates of new churches that are not standing and are therefore making some of us, some of our youth to derail, will not stand in Jesus' name. Let's open our mouths and pray. The Antichrist, those of who oppose the truth, false doctrines, deceptions, all the gates of hell will not, will not prevail against the church of God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. You are here this morning, beloved brother and sister. And God is here. And is ready for you. Are you ready for God? Why not open your mouth and say, Lord, I'm here. While on others you are calling, I must not go from this service today empty-handed. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench the testing of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. This is you praying for yourself now. I'm sure you can do better because God will surely answer your prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you for this hour. We know that your presence is here and your power is here. Beyond our request this morning, for the nation, for our Father and the Lord, for the church of the living God, and for our personal lives, each and every of our prayers we answer in Jesus' name. As we continue this morning, continue with us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. A better amen before you sit down. God bless you. Let's be seated. You are welcome to today's Sunday worship service. 